Now, this has been a major research focus for about 10 or 20 years to look at how species contribute to ecosystem function, uh, especially the idea of ecosystem services. Much of that work originally focused on the effects of species richness, that is just looking at how the total number of species would affect ecosystem function. But in more recent years, there's been a turn towards examining and understanding the effects of individual species. So we want to actually tease out what the individual species are contributing to all these different uh, measures of ecosystem function. The term natural experiment comes from uh, a monograph by Martin Cody in the 1970s. And in this work, Martin's emphasizing the idea that we can take advantage of natural variation in communities rather than necessarily have to, have to carry out a formal manipulative field experiment. And in this case, the natural variation that we're looking for is a set of samples, some of which have a particular species present, and another set of samples in which the species is absent. We assume that the samples are comparable in all other respects, except for the presence and absence of that species. And that's why it's called a natural experiment. We don't control the variables overtly, like we do in a, a true manipulative experiment, but we take advantage of this variation that's present. So then the comparison would be, what does the ecosystem variable look like in the plots that have the species versus the plots that do not? That's the essence of a natural experiment. We work with these communities for two main reasons. One you know, is because they are very, very important communities, many, many terrestrial ecosystems, particularly in arid and senior ecosystems, when they play key, key, key roles on the nitrogen, carbon, and water, and water, and water taxes. And second, this, uh, these uh, communities dominated by lichens, but uh, in the field you can also find other organisms like mosses and bacteria and so on, uh, are very, very, very interesting and are, are a very good model system for studying many aspects of community and ecosystem ecology and are particularly well suited for testing. The, the method that we are proposing this paper. They, they are uh, good communities for, for doing so because they, they are small, so you can have a large re re replication with a, without a very, uh, with, with an effort that, that we usually can afford, and that's something that we did in the natural experiments. We sampled a, a large number of, of plots where they, when, when they differ uh, in the, the composition of the species, and we, we just show a quite important variation in different soil variables related to the system functioning, and we made a uh, good use of, of that natural variation. And these communities, because they are small and because the species can be identified by eye, are also prone to experimental manipulation. And that's also what we did uh, in this paper. We uh, set up a microcosm experiment where we manipulated the, the species composition of the, of the communities and other, other, other aspects of the community, like spatial pattern and the species richness, and using the same, the same common, common, common soil and common growing conditions and experimental conditions. So all the changes that we could detect in the experiment the soil can be directly linked to the variation in the, in the species composition. This, this is what we are, we, are, we are interested in. So these communities are really uh, well suited to do uh, a lot of different things and we believe that they are a, a very nice community to test the ideas that we put forward and the method that we put forward in this, this paper. So usually the one weak part, one unsatisfying part of using a natural experiment is since we don't have as much control over it as in a real field experiment, it's hard to know whether the statistics or the methods that we're looking at are actually getting at the mechanisms we're interested in. And so what was special in this case as Fernando was able to bring to the table two kinds of data sets. First is the natural experiment data set that's associated with the method we have developed. But then he's got the second data set where he's actually experimentally manipulating communities. And this gives us a very unique opportunity 
to test the method. That is, we can actually see whether applying the method to the non-experimental data can be confirmed or validated by the uh, formal field experiments. So we just don't have that opportunity in ecology to, to make those kinds of formal tests. As we can see in, in those pictures, uh, biological cell crust can be really prevalent in, in, in arid and semi-arid environments. For instance, we can see here in the large picture an example from an Australian woodland where we can see how the, the open space, is, which traditionally has been uh, called background, is not, is not really bare because uh, it's dominated by a biological cell crust uh, dominated by lichens. Similar situations can be found in many other ecosystems. I have put here just two examples. In, we go to the to the right of the slide. In the upper picture, we can see a, a stipe atenatissima steep from central Spain, where we can see how the the, the space the space between the the stipe atasacs is uh, dominated by uh, uh, again a uh, uh, quite well developed lichen by the grass is which can be distinguished as all these white white spots. And in the in the other picture we can see another example from a uh, badland in, in Kibor in Venezuela, where we can see again all these black black and greenish areas is a uh, is a quite well developed biological soil crust, again dominated by lichens and also by cyanobacteria. So we, I will start now a little bit about the, the experiment. The natural experiment we did was conducted in, in central Spain. So we can see here we use uh, we, we did the sampling in a not very very large area. And one one nice thing about these communities is because they are small, you can have large replication levels uh, with a reasonable uh, amount of effort. It's like you were studying mini ecosystems. In this slide, it was, I was just showing uh, a picture of how uh, our study area looked like when we go, we, when we are inside, and uh, of the quadrats we used to, to survey the biological soil crust and to, to collect soil from, from which we analyze different variables related to ecosystem function that we uh, describe in the, in the paper. In this slide, uh, I wanted just to show some some parts of the experimental setup of the experiment that we present that we use to to validate uh, the results of the of the method obtained with the field data, and it was a quite large experiment, uh, and it took quite a quite a lot of effort to set up. So what we did is we went to the field, we collected intact uh, soil grass fragments, then in the lab we cut down uh, those fragments of different species into one square centimeter uh, quadrat, lichen quadrat. Overall, we cut down over 25,000 quadrats, so it was quite, quite, a, quite a huge work. Then we went to the field, uh, collected soil from an abandoned gypsum quarry. We mixed very well the, the soil with the help of a cement mixer and quite a lot of hands. And then we used that soil to create these uh, communities where we, one by one, place the different lichen fragments. And in this, this slide, uh, we can see how one of these microcosms looks like. If we go to the left, in this, all this, this color template uh, represents uh, the template we use for every micro, microcosm. So for every microcosm, we have a different template. In this template, every, every different color indicates uh, a different species. And this, in, to the right, we can, and in the right of the slide, we can see a picture of how a, a microcosm looks like. Okay, well, um, there's a couple ways. The, there's two kinds of tests that are used for looking at ecosystem function. And, and one is from an older literature that looks at ecosystem engineers and particular keystone species. Most of, the, most of the metrics used in that case are done on a per capita or per individual basis. Uh, our method does not use that. It simply takes the species effect as a whole. And you see three advantages of that. The first is 
sort of a statistical one. If we, if we try and do a per capita effect, the species is rare, we're dividing by a small number in the denominator, and so we may introduce lots of errors that way to avoid that problem. Second is the idea that the abundance of the species is actually a trait itself that's part of the species, so we don't necessarily want to factor or divide that out. And third is the notion that by not using per capita effects, many communities of organisms can't be counted as individuals, and that's the case for Fernando's lichen communities. We really can't have individuals. We have modular growth of organisms, so we don't separate that out. The other body of literature that looks at quantifying ecosystem effects is then more in the experimental context where we compare the yields of monocultures versus mixed species plantings. The method we proposed in some ways is actually much more applicable to the kinds of data that community ecologists will gather when they are first in the initial stages of investigating ecosystem function. So what an investigator would do is typically go out to survey a number of different samples or a number of different communities. In each of those communities, we look at what species are present, and we look at the set of ecosystem variables that are actually measured for each of those sites. So that's the kind of data that this test is looking at. Uh, I, I think a key feature of the test is it's not so much a test of ecosystem function as it's really a test of pattern. What we're saying is, is there any association between the presence or absence of each species and the measured ecosystem variables? That's the first step for at least making the argument that, there, that species are important for ecosystem function. Well, as I said, I think it's going to be a community and ecosystem ecologists who have non-experimental data on ecosystem function. So where we've gone out and simply measured basic ecosystem function variables, including things like uh, nitrogen retention and water retention and biomass and the other things that oftentimes go into measures of ecosystem services. And we measure those along with the composition, the presence or absence of species. Um, those data are much easier to get than the actual experimental manipulation. So we're hoping that the method can be widely used on that basis. Thank you.